All right, this is the climb, Deutsche Tap, 10.78 kilometers, 6% average gradient, KOM is 25.20, my time is 28.35. And today we had two people go up the door who set faster times than me, Pirapul, Chuchia, and Kwang, 26.51. And then the other guy, 26.58, Thanakan. So here is the footage. They're basically just doing a pace line up this climb. Uh, and because it's 6%, you do get quite a good draft. So anyway, you can see we start off with about 7 or 8 riders. And I'm just going to commentate for probably most of it. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the whole thing. We will see how I am feeling and what the... Uh, I don't know, it just depends on the footage. I've seen most of it, but I haven't seen all of it. So then you can see they're starting off, you know, decent pace. And um, I just want to comment on, like, the difference between me and these guys. So I did 28.35, right, behind Paul. So I did zero turns. I was literally just drafting the whole time. But obviously, I was only drafting off one person. So I feel like on this group, like, you probably do get a better draft in turn, like, when you're just sitting at the back, obviously. But then you, you're, you're doing turns on the front. So it probably works out a little bit better than having one person to draft off only that person. But anyway, it's just interesting to see, like, what these guys can do and then what they, what, like, Alex can do, who's, like, basically their best rider when he, I, I think he had the whole team, like, basically just drilling it for him. So anyway, you've got TT Man at the back and he's got pretty thick calves, so you, you probably know he's going to get dropped soon because he's a big lad. Um, and they're doing 24k an hour up this part, which is, which is fast, but there's some outrageous speeds earlier. So they set some pretty fast times at the beginning um, and then... Sort of, I think it tailed off a little bit at the end, but it's interesting to see just like how they pedal. So, most of them look pretty relaxed at this moment in time. The guy at the back, you can see, is straining a little bit more than the person in front of him, who looks like he's the guy in front, literally looks like he's going on a Sunday cruise. He looks, he's barely trying, the old man, um, always just hiding it very well. Uh, TT bike is very interesting. I don't think he'll be fast on this climb, um, unless you had a 6.8 kilo TT bike and you were really comfortable, so you could push the exact same watts. But for me, like if I'm trying to get in the TT position on this climb. I don't think it's as fast just because um, I can't push the same watts. But obviously, if you're like someone who, like Tom Dumoulin or someone like that, who's really comfortable in the TT position and can just hold the same power, then it probably is faster because there's, you know, 25k an hour, which is sort of what these guys do, 24 um, when they hit 26 minutes. Like, it definitely does um, help the, the aero effects. So, again, it, it doesn't look that fast. It's, it's sort of weird. It looks like. Okay, it looks fast, but it looks like it's flat. It doesn't really... I don't know. It, this is the problem, I think, with um, when you film on the motorbike. It doesn't really look like you're um, going that hard, especially when you see how chilled out all these guys are. Like, you can see, like, they look like they're just going for a real steady spin. I guess now you can see they're going pretty fast um, just because you you can see the surrounding. But when it films like this, it looks so flat. Like, this bit here actually gets up to, like, 10% or uh, this little lip. But it looks like it's completely flat. And this part here is still like probably 5%, 6%. Um, they're all in their big rings. And I think at this speed it makes sense to go in the big ring. I think on my PR I was in the big ring for most... No, I was in the small ring for all of it. Um, apart from the slight downhill. But then the next time I tried to get a PR, I think I did 29 something. I was in the big ring. And I think it just depends. Like The thing with the big ring is like it definitely is a little bit more efficient. Like very marginal. But it is a little bit more efficient. But then obviously at the same time... It's a little bit, if you're like suddenly, you don't want to be grinding. Um, so I think it just depends. Like at this speed, 26 minute, 27 minute, for sure, the big ring is the way to go. Um, and you can see, you know, everyone's swapping turns. This guy at the back, you can see, is really hurting in comparison to the other guys who are just a lot more chilled out. But going back to like what I wanted to mainly do the video on about is just like the difference between like Continental riders. So these guys are like, they most of them race for the Thai Continental team. Uh, they do Tour of Korea and, you know, decent Asian races to be fair. Um, and they, they can chuck a good two minutes into the old man. Um, and they're obviously swapping turns, like this guy's saying cheerio. Um, I'm going to say the draft is more or less the same because they'll be swapping turns, but then they have more people. Sorry about the background noise, I'm back home and there's just absolute chaos happening outside. Um, building works and all the rest of it. Um, but I can't really get away from that, unfortunately. But anyway, going back to the video, so they put two minutes into me and they were swapping turns. And it's just like, it's quite humbling really, because you're just like, I thought I was quite good, but then... In reality, I'm alright. Like, I'm not... Obviously, like, compared to some people, I'm good. But compared to, like, these guys, I'm not really. And, like, compared to the KOM, I'm still, like, three minutes off. Um, I'm not sure whose heart rate that is. Um, I've seen people do that before where they have the power. So the coach will have the power of the rider and then be, he'll be motor pacing well. That will only work with some power meters, though, because a lot of power meters, including my power meter, doesn't really reach very far. 
Um, so you can see here again, it, it's it's very like the optical illusion is so odd. It looks like they're just not even trying, but like they are. They're going full gas. They're getting like top fives up this climb. I think seven thousand people have done the climb or something. So it's like. I don't know, it's just, it's just interesting, the optical illusion. But you can see, like, everyone's pretty lean here. Like, no one's um, no one's heavy. I believe this guy here is, like, a 55-kilo rider. Um, I think this is Fu Chong, I believe. Um, I've seen him on Strava. I think he did a 29 today. But I'm pretty sure he could go a little bit faster than that, to be honest. Because um, he seems pretty good. <laughs> like, he seems a lot better than the 29. Because the 29 like this, I feel... Yeah, it's you could definitely do better than that. But you can see that they're doing some strong turns on the front. We've got a bit of head bobbing. Watch out, kids. We have a bit of head bobbing on the front of the group. And you can see everyone's starting to join in now. I think this is, what, we're five, six minutes in. And this is when it's like, yeah, it starts to hurt. I guess we're about fifth the way through for these guys. Um, and, yeah, it really does start to hurt. Uh, and it's, it's interesting that they do manage to stay pretty relaxed. Like, I'm terrible at this. And that's one thing that definitely I do need to work on. And that's just being a lot more relaxed and, like, not bobbing as much. Because the problem I have is I literally look like, maybe even when I'm going just, like, 80%, I look like I'm on the limit, but I'm not. But I think it's so much better psychologically if you can just hold that steady position. Even when you're going full gas, just look like it's just real easy. Um, and then people really do get psyched out. I know that sometimes when I ride with people who do that, I'm like, oh, my God, like, I'm not even hurting them. And I do one little dig and then they, like, blow up. And I'm like, what? Like, it looked like it was so easy. But here, we're going 27 k's an hour. They really are flying up this climb. And um, I don't know, like, even my time when I was doing, like, 28, like, it feels incredible. Like, you're just, like, flying. I could, like, 26 minute would be insane. Like, you'd just be going so fast. And it's, like, such a nice sensation. It really is. Um, and a lot of people say the draft doesn't matter. And I feel like those people just haven't really ridden very fast up climbs. Like, I feel even on 10% climbs when I'm going 16, 17 k's an hour, I still feel a draft. Like, when I was riding in Adelaide and me and Dan were doing it, like, I was behind him once, I, I definitely felt the draft. And on this climb, you really feel it. Like, it's odd because it's not as... It's hard to explain, but it's, it's like... It doesn't feel like you're on the flat, obviously. So it still feels a little hard, but it definitely does feel like you're just not having to push as hard, especially on, like, the... The, um, just going into the steep sections, you carry a bit more, like, momentum, or, I don't really know, but it just seems going, I don't know how to explain it, but going into the steep sections, the first little bit definitely feels easier on the wheel. Over the top of the lips, those often you have to accelerate, like, it's obviously more jerky on the wheel, like, in terms of your power, like, it's more stochastic, that's a classic word, um, but even so, it's not, um, it's not crazy, we've got some pretty small guys here, um, Thanakan, I believe, is a very, he's a very small lad, I think he must be 50 kilos, a lot of them didn't post their power data today, I know Thanakan, when he got a 27.15, did about 315 watts, um, I'm, I'm not sure if that was solo, I know some of it was solo, because I saw him at the last part, but I'm not exactly sure, I feel like it wouldn't have all been solo, but, I mean, for me, that he probably weighs like 52 to 55 kilos, something like that, um, and then some of the other ones are obviously a little bit heavier, I'm not sure about Pirapool, um, he has also got a very good time. I think he was 11th before, but then he, um, I was like, oh, he rides the Thai national team. He can't be that good if he's like 11th and then just absolutely smacked me today. I was like, all right, fair play, fair play. Um, but yeah, it's a good climb, this. If you're in Chiang Mai, obviously you're going to be doing it, uh, because it's the, just the classic climb, the absolute classic. And this is the long, um, straight section where really you can drive up the pace because you're getting a good draft if you're sitting on. Um, and it's in, an interesting technique doing, doing this sort of, um, just swapping turns until you die. Uh, and even now, I mean, they're going 24 k's an hour um, up. It's probably about 7% 7, 7 now at this moment in time. So it's, it's pretty solid power. Um, I'm not sure how accurate this speedo is because I feel like they're going a little bit faster than 20 based on their cadence and the gears they're using. Um, but anyway, maybe that is the truth. Yeah, we're up to like 23 k's an hour. But I think, I think uh, I'll just have a little check. But I believe their average speed uh, was pretty high. So they, yeah, they averaged 24.1 kilometers an hour and 24 kilometers an hour, um, respectively, the two lads, um, which is, you know, pretty fast, like, for going up a 6% gradient. Um, most people would be pretty happy to do on, like, a 5% gradient for, like, five minutes or something. Um, but, yeah, it's just, I just love, like, seeing how good these people are and just, like, thinking, like, you know, I'm not, like, I don't know, I just, I just feel like when I watched this, I really just, like, wanted to be there and just try and hang on as much as possible. It would have just been so good. And you can see at the back, like, we got, he's starting to hurt this old man at the back. Yeah, he's got his SRAM E-tap on, looking pretty good. He's got some disc brakes on, probably could get rid of those, save a little little bit of grams. The guy ahead has an S-Works Tarmac SL5, I believe, not the, not the latest one. Uh, the Thai Continental team, I believe, is sponsored by Specialized, which is why they have them. Um, 
and then again it's just it's just watching watching like the cadence of everyone and how relaxed they all are like that you wouldn't if you just saw this and like this is it this is when uh my old mate Fushong says cheerio uh, he doesn't. He feels like he can't go harder. Maybe, maybe you know, he was just pacing himself and was just like, you know, I don't feel it today or whatever. Because I feel like he could definitely go faster. Um, but yeah, he just said cheerio at that point. Um, no real reason necessarily. Well, it didn't look like there was a big acceleration, but maybe yeah, he was just not not on form. You can see this is when the climb starts to get a bit more weavy and they go up some little just start sharp pinches. And that's always when um people are gonna get dropped just around little corners like. The, I mean, you might not think it's much, but there's just a little acceleration. If you're on the limit, then it really does hurt. And you can see here, the pace is now starting to go up quite a lot. He's really, this guy's really doing a solid turn on the front. Now he's, they all have bottles on the climbs, which is interesting. I think it's probably they just didn't take them off at the bottom. But for this climb, you don't really need a bottle if you're well hydrated before. And you've had a good warm up, you just leave them at the bottom or something. Uh, and then, yeah, this, the pace has definitely gone up. You can see suddenly everyone's hurting a little bit more. Uh, on this climb, though, I think it's really important to be quite aero, especially at this speed. Like, they're, you know, they're pretty low down, but, I mean, I feel like if you have your arms at, like, a 90-degree angle, um, then it definitely helps. So he's done his turn. He's really up the pace now. And then the next lad is coming through, and we're now down to four riders. Um, the person on the back must have been hating life because he'd just done his turn, and then um, his friend had just destroyed it on the front. And you can definitely, um, you definitely can see that, like, there is a draft. Because, I mean, like, you wouldn't be able to do that turn and hop back on if there was no draft. Because you'd just be absolutely popped. Um, but he's, you know, slightly recovering at this moment in time. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think it's, um, it's like, doing this is more like over and unders. Where you maybe go 105, 110% of FTP, maybe, just maybe 105. And then you sit back on the wheel and you're maybe doing 90% of FTP. If this is, like, a FTP effort. Which it more or less is for me. I think I held 3.18 and my FTP is around my last 3.15 or something um, for about half an hour. So I probably could hold more watts, to be honest. Um, maybe if I, uh, maybe I had my FTP was a little bit low on those days. It's hard, always hard to tell. It's also hard to tell just because of like the motivation and everything else. Like at the end of that effort, I wasn't going absolute full gas. Uh, so maybe I could have pushed more watts than possible. But it is around, I'd say around an FTP effort that's probably the best way to pace it at the beginning so this guy's pulled off to the left just hopping back on the wheel um and you can see some of them have carbon wheels some of them don't have carbon wheels this guy at the front um i think this might be thanahan on the front i'm not 100 sure to be honest like if you're watching this video do correct me if you know who it is um but he's on a trek alr i think it is uh with just standard aluminium rims and he's banging out big numbers um and yeah there's, you can see like you don't need the nicest of bikes like it definitely helps and the sensations are nicer but for sure you can go pretty fast and you, you see here it starts to flatten off this is really when everyone's just trying to get error as possible it starts to get down to five percent cutting some corners to save some time you clever boys yeah i was going to say it's going to be up to 30 k's an hour here and this is when if you're on the back you really do get a good draft here you, you're just loving life um but around these corners obviously have a little bit surges but if you're clever if you see the guy on the back around those corners he'd just back off a little bit and then carry more speed into it and get on the back because if you were following that wheel exactly you'd slow down a little bit and then have to accelerate back on so he knows what he's doing he's also got some very interesting green tires um i think they might be vittorias some of the vittorias you can get like different colors on the outside of the tires so it, potentially it's them but i'm not 100 percent sure for this climb note like they do it pretty late i think these boys normally do it, leave sort of night um or hit the climb about nine o'clock more or less which is an interesting tactic um i mean i think they just don't like to wake up that early which is fair enough but definitely you will get faster times i think at the beginning of the day just because you can cut more corners because there's less cars i mean having said that like you do get a little bit of a draw when buses and cars overtake you like when you, when they overtake you they push air forwards and then you you just do get a little bit of a draft but i wouldn't say that it's um it's probably enough to warrant going later i think it probably is better to go early and just cut the corners um because you will save some times like here you would be getting a little bit of draft off that red truck but not significantly you can definitely see the lads are really suffering now this guy on the front is like it must be like 50 kilos or something i think this is old thangham but he's looking very con controlled that might be pure pool i think correct me if i'm wrong i'm not sure who this guy is unfortunately and i also don't know who this guy is on the back either um but yeah, they're looking pretty confident um, and just, you know, looking so motivated as well. Like, they, they're looking like the guy on the front is really just loving life. He's just hurting everyone. The guy at the back's got two water bottles. I'm not sure what he's doing. But anyway, maybe he's not taking this as seriously as I thought they all would. And they, maybe it's just like they care more about the numbers than the times. Because to be honest, I mean, the numbers are more important than the times. But like, everyone does like a good Strava time. Anyway, 
I believe this is now Thana County has decided that, you know what, boys, it's time to pull off. Someone else should do the effort. And you can see here, it doesn't slow down very much. Keeps pretty much the same. And the guy at the back, um, it looks like he's leaving a little, yeah, he's leaving a little gap. He's clearly dying a little bit. It's like, you know what, boys, you can go, you can go and pull another turn. I'm just going to chill at the back. But it's pretty, pretty amazing to have these, like, um, training rides uh, that they post on the Facebook uh, it was just good seeing like how fast these guys go or whatever um, for the national team riders and the entire continental team. Uh, it's just it's one of those uh, one of those things that you don't see very often. Like, I mean, from training camps. I mean, like I guess I like in Adelaide you see a little bit from like Tour Down Under. Like I've I've documented some of that before on my channel. But um, I mean, it's different because the World Tour guys aren't really going full gas. Then they're mainly just you know chilling, doing endurance and stuff. Maybe a couple of, like thirty second intervals, like thirty seconds on, thirty seconds off. But you don't get to see this where they're just absolutely launching at full gas as hard as they possibly can go. And this bit here is always where people get dropped. Because I don't know why it is, but whenever I seem to pace people, people always get dropped at this little lip here. I think it's because you go around the corner, you know, you're just over halfway and people always start to struggle. But this guy on the back is really out the saddle sprinting, just trying to get on. I mean, he looks like... He looks like pretty in control, but you can see the way his like wheel is going, oscillating between going real close and real far. He's definitely struggling to hold consistent power. The head bob is starting to come out, but he still looks very relaxed, to be honest. Like very, very relaxed. And I think that's one thing you definitely can see from this. Like even when they're pushing to the max, these pro riders, they just they're just a very relaxed boys, very just loose and just like yeah, it's all good, don't worry. Um, and here again, you're getting more draft. There's little the little pinches here. Um, where you need to surge the power if you're on the wheel. Um, I've got some good photographers on the left <laughs> taking some nice pictures of the boys. And again, pulls off and lets Thanakan, I believe, on the <laughs> go through. The guy in the back is just like, you know what, you can uh, you can have a little turn. But he, the guy at the back is good. He doesn't leave too much a gap. He sort of pulls up to the left so that he doesn't have to do a massive surge to get back on. He's um pretty experienced, the young man. We're up to 17 minutes. I might just do the whole thing. We've only got 10 minutes left. You know what, Let's let's go and do it. So again, we're getting towards, you know, the flat part of the climb. So, you know, first, first 10, 10 minutes of the climb, a bit windy, not consistent gradient at all, quite horrible, don't enjoy it. And some long straight parts, which really do like mess with your brain. We then come to this part of the climb, which is sort of a bit more weavy, quite enjoyable, um, just because, you know, you're going around corners, a little bit flats, uh, a little bit downhill, some of them. Uh, this climb is, it's like average 6%, and it stays very close to 6%, but there are a little, little just up and down, like between sort of 4 and 8%. It does oscillate quite a lot, especially around the corners. You see you sort of go downhill into the corner, and then this, and then it gets a little bit steep around this part of the climb. But I do enjoy this part of the climb. And if you are if you are riding this climb, then this is definitely the best part of it, in my opinion. Uh, you sort of in the trees, going around lots of corners. It's all it's all good. And then we have a downhill after this part, where it is pretty significant, the downhill. like You'll, you'll pick up speed to about 45, uh, 50 k's now if you're really going for it. And then it sort of flattens off into maybe 3 4%, nothing too crazy. Um, and then sort of after maybe like a kilometer of three, four percent, um, it then ramps back up to sort of six percent or so. And then the last um, maybe 400 meters, 500 meters, about 10 percent. And that really is that quite brutal at the end of it, because normally, you know, if it's like the last bit is three, four percent, like if you'll really surge the power, you lose the power. It doesn't matter too much because like the speed, you've got air resistance. So the speed's not going to be too crazy. But on those real steep climb, if you're suddenly losing like 50 watts, the time just evaporates. And I think we've just said cheerio to our, our fourth man. I think he was like, you know what, it's a, it's just too hard. And this part is actually the flatter part, but I think just because of the accelerations are going slightly up, slightly down uh, around this part of the course, uh, around this part of the climb, not course, uh, it's definitely paid its efforts. And you can see we're now down to three, and it's going to be interesting to see who survives. I, I know the guy on the front definitely survives. I think the guy in the second wheel survives, but I'm not 100% sure. It's hard to tell. Just their body language, you know, you can see the guy on the front is definitely dominating this. He's spending a lot of time on the front and really driving the pace as much as possible. We then have one guy which will be Piripu and we will find out very shortly as to who that is. I haven't really watched all of this footage so far. We then got a lad on the right who's like, you know what, on the left, sorry, who's like, you know what, boys, I think I can, I'm actually a Thai pro continental rider. And uh, he's decided to get on, on the train. I all right, sorry about that. We lost some footage from the download. But anyway, we've got it back on the Facebook. So anyway, we this guy on the left, as I was saying, is thinking that he's a, a Thai continental rider. But we do actually have the man I thought was dropped. He is here. This corner here is very nice, very fast corner, and you really get start to build up speed going into the last part of the course. So you can see here um, this guy on the left. I, I'm not actually sure who this is. This might be on my old mate. Who is it? Uh, I'm trying to see. 
I don't know actually who that is. I thought I recognized him. Alas, I do not. Uh, but we're getting up towards the downhill, uh, which is always pretty exciting. And when you get to the downhill, really, like if you've survived that long, it's always going to be good. We've got some more riders on the left who maybe set off a little bit ahead and decide that, it's, you know what, boys, it's time to hop on the pace line and see if, how long we can survive. Uh, they are really flying on this climb at this moment in time. It's quite incredible. I feel like if you haven't ridden it, you don't really appreciate the speed. But having ridden this, I'm like, oh my god. Like, trying to drop two minutes off my PR is just absolutely nuts. Like, I mean, I don't know. Some It's, it's sort of annoying because, like, I know some people who come back, like, to Chiang Mai maybe every year. And they drop, like, a couple minutes off every, their TT every year. But I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not dropping maybe. Like, if I can drop a minute off my PR, I'll be like, on with a moon, let alone like two minutes, like it just it's just crazy. Um the here, like they don't cut the corners that aggressively. Like they they cut some corners, but they're not like crazy going on the other side of the road or like going on the other side of the lane when it's not necessary. I guess these guys are so fast it's sort of irrelevant and doesn't really matter make as much of a difference. And also the main thing for them is just like the power they do. The Strava times are of less importance to these lads. Um and you can see we're now picking it up. We've got some more photographers. There's a lot of photographers. Oh, it's the same bloke actually fair. Fair enough, same bloke, just taking a lot of pictures. So I believe Danikan's now done a solid turn on the front. And this is when we start to get to the downhill. And if you've survived to this part, you, I feel like you're not really going to lose too much time. Because uh, if you survive to this part, you get a good recovery. And then you'll probably be able to hold on more or less to the steep part of the climb. Because you'll get a good recovery. I've found that's happened a couple of times. I've been almost dying. Um, but look at the guy on the front. He's doing decent power. We get up to 42 k's an hour. Um, might go a little bit faster. I'm not sure. Yeah, 45 or only 44 but if you see if obviously if you're at the back here you are just cruising barely trying when you're going this speed and the, and the climb does go downhill a little bit more and then it doesn't really ramp up for it takes quite a long time to get back up to six percent and on these shallower gradients for sure you can definitely feel the draft and it's very enjoyable when you're on the wheel because you're just like yeah the lad's doing a big turn on the front and i'm just cruising at the back loving life um the cadence has definitely come up that account you can see is a pretty cru cruisy crate cadence, not really too high. Um, he's also got quite a low seat height as well. He looks uh, looks pretty good to be honest on his bike. Oh, a bit of going across the yellow lines, outrageous behaviour, out outrageous. Um, yeah, there's a lot of controversy about crossing lines. You probably probably know about that. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny they did that. I mean, they probably gained like not even a second. But anyway, the guy at the back on the motorbike, I believe, is might be a he's some bloke who just seems to honk his horn to make sure there's there's no trouble going around. Um, he looks pretty relaxed, this guy, old Danikan at the front, I believe. I really hope this is actually Danikan, otherwise it will be quite embarrassing. He's got no bottles, he's taking this stuff seriously, he really is. Um, he's, he's not messing around. He knows he's got the alloy wheels and he's just like, you know what, no bottles, lads. And that is the future. No saddlebags either, no pumps or anything. I guess they've got the support team, so it doesn't really matter. That guy's just waving him through, saying, you know what, boys, I'm a, I'm a little bit cooked here, I am. Um, I don't really want to be doing a turn on the front. And this part here, again, it does ramp up just a little bit. Uh, it's not it's not enough to really drop people, but, you know, it gets up to maybe 8-9% just for a little, like, maybe 10-15 seconds. And it definitely does hurt. You can you can feel it with your little legs, and you're just like, ah, oh, this really hurts. Um, and you just, the speed slows down a little bit, and it's just quite an effort. You sort of just need to sprint over it and get on. If you're on the wheel, it's slightly easier, but on the front, it really is quite sad the gaps are starting to open up you can see old Thanakan's putting the power down really hurting all the other boys everyone's bobbing all around but still look pretty relaxed to be honest like no one's absolutely crying at this point i haven't seen some extreme head bobs yet just um normal normal sort of volumes of head bobs the cadence is spinning up he's spinning it up on this little sram i think he's got sram red i believe there the lightest group set or one of them i think rotoruno might be lighter these days but or maybe even sram etap could be lighter i'm not 100 percent sure but you can see this is this bit i was talking about where it really starts to you know ramp up and pool's putting a big big i mean not pool, sorry thanakan is putting a big effort in at the moment he's out the saddle just absolutely smashing it up these old blokes must have set up ahead and just been like oh maybe we'll be able to hang on but alas you will not be able to hang on because these guys are absolutely flying off at like 26 minute pace um which is quite crazy um and just you know compared to the normal person it's um it's nuts how fast these guys go up uh i think that's a skin suit i think the guy at the back is wearing a skin suit trying to get some aero gains which is fair enough because i was as i was saying before it is a pretty fast climb at like 25 k's an hour this guy at the back has decided you know he's gonna hop on i'm not sure he's gonna hop on for too long to be honest they're going 30 k's an hour at this point 32 almost um that's yeah pretty solid on this gradient as i was saying before though this part definitely is less less steep 
um, which is nice. And Thanagan really is driving this. I mean, like without him, I'm not sure what sort of time they would be getting, um, just because he he's absolutely destroying everyone up this climb, um, and just it's so amazing to see like just. I don't know how everyone pedals and just it really does fascinate me I just think because I really want to get better at climbing like really good I want to be a real good climber uh, obviously like I need you know this is some things that you can do and some things that you can't do so for instance I'm never going to be doing like a 25 minute out the door um but you know getting down to 26 27 that would be pretty impressive for me uh if I could do that someday or just you know like that sort of a level obviously it wouldn't have to be necessary on this climb but getting up to you know being able to hold like 5.8 watts per kilo for you know 20 minutes let's say something around that level would be quite incredible um and I'd love to do it this is it this is the steep part this is when the difference is going to be made we've got four guys here um, four guys left and we're going to be able to see who is who is the strongest because up until now you can be hanging on as you've seen that guy at the back um, he's been hanging on you know looking good but nothing absolutely crazy I believe this is old um, oh wait hang on I might have actually got all my all my names wrong but one guy's gone um, this might be actually Thanagan and he's decided that you know what boys I'm going for it and everyone else is crying this is it the hairpin is really tough you've got to you've got to go around the hairpin and then sprint out the saddle as you can see it is done expertly by the guy at the front this might be Thanagan he's actually overtaking the bus he's overtaking the bus this young lad he's absolutely flying up this climb and just holding nothing back and look how fast he's going up this climb he's like doing 600 watts probably at this moment in time in, just in the saddle just absolutely flying like if you've done this climb you're normally crying up this he's in the big dog just destroying it it's absolutely nuts um how fast is he going up this climb 23 k's an hour up a nine percent gradient he is destroying this climb um and you'll see the dip, the gap he puts into everyone else is absolutely nuts i'm not sure if this time was actually on strava to be honest because the other two got exactly the same time so i feel like this guy potentially does not have strava but he is flying up this climb at huge speeds um and just loving life he was obviously just saving himself for this and just absolutely giving everything you can see some elephant pants on the left hand side you probably have no idea what's going on this guy is just going to destroy i'm not sure what time he got must have been pretty close maybe a 25 minute or something that was uh, pretty insane but anyway there we go cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this commentary of the uh, thai national team destroying deutsche uh and i'll see you in the next video